Hello everyone, in this video I am going to discuss about DHCP, also known as Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We all use mobile phones and laptops or PCs at home or at offices to access network resources such as internet or printer etc. To access the network and its resources, every device on TCP IP based network must have a unique unicast IP address. Along with the IP address, each device must be assigned a default gateway and IP address of DNS servers. Following are the two basic IP address assignment methods static and dynamic. Static in this method, an IP address is statically assigned to a device by the administrator. The administrator configures the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS servers manually. Static address assignment method is an extra burden for the administrator, especially on the large scale network. Administrator must configure the address on every end systems in the network manually. Next is dynamic. In this method, IP addresses are assigned to the end system by DHCP server. As I said earlier, DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It is a client server protocol used for address assignment. With DHCP, this entire process is automated and managed centrally. This method relieves the administrator of manually assigning an address to every network device. On the client machine, you have to select the options as Obtain IP address and DNS automatically. It automatically provides all the parameters to the end device. As you can see, an IP address and other related configuration information such as subnet mask, default gateway and DNS IP is assigned to the end device. Next we have DHCP scope. It is a pool of IP addresses or usually a range of consecutive numbers within a single IP subnet maintained by a DHCP server. DHCP server assigns IP to the client from this pool or scope. Any numbers that the administrator does not want to have handed out can be excluded from the pool. DHCP adapts the concept of lease in IP allocation. It sets a lease duration and allow the client to use the allocated IP address only during the set lease duration. If the client wants to renew or wishes to use the allocated IP address for longer than the released leased duration, it should request the DHCP server for the renewal of the lease. If the device is disconnected or powered off, it releases the IP instead and returns to the pool for reallocation. Now let's take a look at exactly what happens when DHCP client requests an IP address from DHCP server. There are some messages which are exchanged between the DHCP server and client. This process is divided into four steps. First step, when a DHCP client first boots up, it broadcasts a DHCP discover message. This message is initiated from the client to the server to find the DHCP server on the local network. If the DHCP server exists on the local segment, it will respond with a DHCP offer message. This message is from the DHCP server to the DHCP client to offer the IP parameters. Once the client receives the offer, it will respond with a DHCP request, which indicates that it will accept the offered protocol information. This message is from DHCP client to DHCP server giving a request to the get the offered IP parameters. The final message, the server responds with a DHCP ACK, acknowledging the client acceptance of offered protocol information. This message is from DHCP server to the DHCP client, giving confirmation to use the offered IP parameters. This entire process is also known as DORA process. DHCP is a UDP service uses two UDP port numbers for its operation. DHCP server uses the UDP port 67 and DHCP client uses the UDP port 68. Use of the port numbers prevents an application from getting a message from a completely different protocol. What if the client and server are on different subnets? Well, DHCP relay 
or DACP helper agent must be used in this case. Other than dynamically assigning IP address to client machines, DACP also has the ability to provide various other interesting parameters or DACP options to client machines like time zone information, boot argument paths, NTP server, static routes, interface MTU options, host name of the client, very useful for IoT and any device without user. For more information on DACP options, please go through RFC 1533. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the ring bell button. Thank you.